Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Well, good morning. morning. How's everybody? Did y'all like that extra hour of sleep? How many of y'all did not know you would get an extra hour of sleep? (laughs) Oh, not until your wife told you? Isn't Isn't that wild how that works out? Your wife is just so helpful for that. I had somebody comment on my outfit today. They're like, wow, that looks really nice. I was like, you like that? I picked it out myself from the two she laid out on the bed for me. <laughs> anyway. Hey, I'm Joel. I'm the teaching guy here. We're starting a new series today <laughs> called Big Perspective. Pastor Marcus and I were talking. We're like, what, what is the congregation to need in November? And we thought, you know what we're probably going to need is a little perspective lifter. Because it may get a little ugly this month. But we can have confidence that if we keep our vision lifted, God's going to be still working, doing things behind the scenes, and we can have confidence in that. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we do that, though, jump into it. I have kind of a bummer of announcement this morning. Just wanted to let you know of something. Uh, You know, King Solomon, he says, for everything, there's a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Our children's pastor, Abby, she is feeling like God is calling into her into a new season. She's actually got some great, amazing things ahead. And so we're super bummed, but she, this is her last Sunday here. So yes, she has done an outstanding job. Let's give her a hand. I don't know if she was in the other services, but she has done an outstanding job leading our children's ministry. And listen, in my humble opinion, the children's ministry is the most important thing that goes on here on Sunday mornings. You know what we do here, that's all right. But man, raising up the next generation, super important. And fortunately, God has provided Kate Pena. She's been volunteering and serving in the kids' ministry for years, or for, I think, years. She's stepping in to take that role. So y'all be praying for her, encourage her. Oh, there's Abby back there. Uh, you want to come forward and have us? No, I'm just kidding. She would kill me if I made her do that. So, so uh, you guys be praying for Abby as she goes into the next season. I know good things are ahead for her because she's just like incredible potential she's got. And then be praying for Kate as well as she's taking over this ministry. So... All right, y'all ready for this? Big perspective. So when I was in college, uh, I worked a full-time job. I was working at Southwest Airlines down at the airport. You guys have heard me talk about this. I was working 40, sometimes 50 hours a week, and I was taking full-time classes, like 15 hours of classes, which is like five classes. It was no joke. It took everything I had. Every moment of the day, I knew where I needed to be. I was also playing in a band at that time. So I didn't date for a long time because I just literally had no space for it. Well, one day I was playing in a band and I was playing lead guitar. I was an electric guitar player and there was a super cute girl up front and I was like, whoa, that's a cute girl. (laughs) So afterwards I struck up a conversation with her and we started talking and she's like, oh, I'm going to make an album, a musical album and would you be interested in helping me with it? And I was like, yeah. So I started showing up at her house regularly and we'd do music together and, you know, and I'm thinking, man, this girl's really cool. I really like her, but I was trying to play it cool too because I knew I didn't have time to date and stuff. So it was the kind of the, I was just pr- trying to play it cool. For this one, on for like four months. She'd call me and she'd be like, hey, come over. And I'd be like, okay. So I'd have time free or I'd arrange my schedule and we'd go over and hang out and everything's going really good. And I'm starting to think, okay, you know what? I need to like make this official. Like ask her out and be like, hey, let's go. And you know, we've been hanging out a lot. You know, that conversation, the awkward one. <laughs> so I go, I'm, I'm literally about to do this. And a friend of mine comes to me and he's like, hey, bro, I want your, uh, I, I want to ask you something. And I was like, what's that? He's like, well, I think I'm going to marry her. I think I'm going to ask her to marry me. And I was like, well, who? And he goes, he said the name of the girl I'd been hanging out with. It's like, what the, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, we've been, we've been dating. And I'm like, how long? He's like, about four months. I'm like, I was like, do you know she calls me to go hang out with her? He's like, yeah, yeah, you're helping her with her album. I'm like, (laughs) what the, like, like, did how, first of all, I'm like, how did I miss this, right? Like this, she led me on, right? And how did I not see this? How did I not know they weren't dating? She never mentioned him. (laughs) Then he goes, it's like the nail in the coffin. He goes, hey. So will you be in an usher in our wedding? It's like, no, I will not be an usher in your wedding. So I'm, I'm very distraught about this. I'm like, this girl led me on for four months. I was putting all this energy into this relationship. I'm like working my tail off at school and work. I didn't have time for this. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm like, ah, oh, forget, forget it, forget it. So a couple months pass by and I meet this other cute girl. And I'm like, all right. The mistake I made last time was not being upfront about my intentions. So I'm like, I go straight to the girl. I'm like, hey, 
you want to go out? She's like, let's do it, right? So we start, we start dating for about a month. And uh, you, keep in mind, I'm super busy. I got work. I got school. Um, but I'm giving her as much time as I can. Well, one day we, had, we were going to go to a concert that, that night. And um, she, I was like, hey, by the time I get off work, I'm going to have to run up and get you. And then we'll go to the concert where we're probably going to be late. And a friend of mine was like, hey, don't worry. I'll pick her up. He's the guy in, a band, in the band with me. He's the drummer. Watch out for drummers, man. <laughs> Do you know how you can tell when a drummer's stage is level? Drool comes out of both sides of their mouth. And I was, oh, whoa. Psh, I'm just kidding. I'm a drummer. So it's, I'm a drummer, so it's a drummer joke. Anyway, so he's like, I'll take her. So he picks her up. We meet at the concert. We're having a great time. Awesome concert. It was amazing, you know, and they're kind of joking with each other, poking each other doing the thing, and should have seen the signs. At the concert's over, I'm like, hey, let's get home. I got to get up for school early tomorrow morning, and my friend's like, don't worry. I'll take her home. She's like, oh, yeah, rookie move indeed. Rookie move. I was like, oh, that's great. Okay, cool. Y'all have a good time. So they take off. The next day I get a, uh, it was actually a voice message from him. He's like, hey, bro, we need to talk. It's my friend. I'm like, what's up? So I call him and he's like, hey, man, I need to apologize for something. Um, last night I kissed your girlfriend. And I was like, meaning like you kissed her and she pulled away? And he's like, no. <laughs> no, I think she liked it, man. I was devastated. I'm like, what is up? Dating stinks. This is horrible. Every woman out there in the whole world it like wants to lead me on. And, and I'm just, I was so devastated. And I remember thinking there in that time, I'm thinking, this is like, is this the only way to meet somebody? I started thinking like, oh, maybe, maybe there's something to arranged marriages, yeah. right? But I remember thinking, what if dating never gets better? Like, what if it's just this bad the whole time? And fortunately, listen, I ended up getting married to an amazing woman. And honestly, it was kind of an arranged marriage. Uh, my, my mom was like, you need to meet this girl. And of course, what did I say? No way. Not if mom recommends her. But mom was right. She was outstanding. When I met her, I was like, whoa, she's really beautiful and cute and funny and all these things, right? But here's my point with all of this. I think every one of us in our life, we've got some area, and maybe all of the rest of life is going good. Like life is good, right? But there's some area of your life where you're saying this about that area. What if this never gets better? For some of you, maybe it's your marriage. Work is going great, but you're going, what if my marriage never improves? Like we've done all the counseling, we've read all the books, and it's just still just, it's not getting better. What if it never gets better? Some of you, it's your finances. You go, man, every time I think we're out of the hole, I'm like, all right, we're going to pay off the debt. We're going to be in the black this month. Bam, something happens, and you've got to ring it up on the credit card, and then you're like, oh, and you just keep getting further and further in the hole, and you go, what if my finances never get better? Some of you, you're in the throes of grief. I've talked to so many people right now who lost someone dear to them, and man, it just it floods over them. They'll wake up and they just feel this deep sense of despair and hopelessness just weighing on them. And you're going, what if the grief never goes away? What if I can never get back to who I used to be? Some of you are dealing with addictions. And every time you think you've got it kicked, you've been to rehab, you know all the steps, but every time you think you've got it kicked, the thing happens. You lose the job or you get into a fight with her or him. And then the next thing you know, it's just, you want to hit, hit that thing. And you go, man, what if it never gets better? And some of you, you're just saying this in general about life. What if life never gets better? You know, I've, I've done counseling for many years, and what I've seen is it typically something happens to women in their mid-30s, right around 35 to 37, and for men it happens in their mid-40s, where they have this moment and they look around and they go, is this really my life? Is this as good as it's going to get? And women, you think, man, like, you know, I love my kids, but wow, I did not sign up for this. This was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And you're kind of looking at yourself and you're going, man, I'm not as in shape as I used to be. And life's hitting me. And for men, it happens later in their 40s because we're just a little slower than women to catch on to what's going on. And you wake up one day and you go, this is not what it was supposed to look like. I was supposed to be at this point right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm like not even close to that. What if, what if my dreams never come true? What if I can never accomplish them? And we have this deep sense of despair that often sets in for us. And I want to talk this morning about how to beat that, how to beat disappointment. And I, I believe the key to that is this, and this is my key point this morning, 
Never, ever, ever lose your hope. Because as soon as you lose hope, it all goes down from there. And I'm convinced that as followers of Christ, we have a promise. One of my favorite verses, you've heard me quote it before, is this right here, Proverbs 4.18. The path of the righteous, which that's you. If you've accepted Jesus, God sees you as righteous, right standing before God. It says the path of the righteous, that's you and me, is like the light of dawn. It's like the, the sun breaking through. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter until full day. And here's my point this morning. If you're looking at your life right now and it's not bright yet, he ain't done. There's more work that he's going to do in your life. And you've got to hold on to hope going, here's my promise. I don't care how dark it looks right now. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. And it shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And if it ain't bright yet, he ain't done. So we hang on to hope. Now, this can be hard, okay? Because some of us, you know, there's kind of generally two different types of personalities I've found. There are people who just are blessed with a personality that's fairly optimistic. My wife and daughter, they're very optimistic. If we were to end up homeless, my, my daughter would immediately, as soon as we like gave over the keys to the house, she'd be like, hey, at least we get to go camping now. Like, that's my daughter. It's like, she can find the silver lining in anything. And my wife is the same way. She's super optimistic. And thank God for that, because I am more realistic. Okay, I call it realism. I can pretty much, I really pretty much believe that everything will go wrong that can go wrong at the worst possible time. And I'll tell you, I'm rarely disappointed. <laughs> That's usually how it happens. And I find what I'm looking for. But here's the thing. A lot of us, we have this more kind of a depressive personality. And, and here's, what I, here's what I'm convinced of. So I studied counseling, right? I've been doing counseling and leadership coaching for many years. And there's this, there's this counseling theory called cognitive behavioral therapy. And in cognitive behavioral therapy, it's pretty much the number one way to treat depression and discouragement. They talk about what's called the cognitive triad of depression. They say when somebody's depressed or really discouraged, these are the thoughts. These are the thoughts they're telling themselves, the things that are, they're maybe saying it out loud or they're thinking them. First is, I'm a horrible person. I'm worthless. Nobody would want me around. Nobody would love me. Maybe you feel like you're a total failure. That's one, of, that's one of the things they tell, that you tell yourself. The second is the world is a horrible place. Look at this world around. Man, it's so bad. There's so much racism and injustice and everything is horrible. And all they see is horrible, horrible, horrible. And here's the worst part about it. It's not going to get better. And when you start to get to that place, you start to lose hope. And, and, and this is the thing. One of the things that Jesus said, one of the most profound things he said, which it, it has layers and layers of truth that he said, if you, if you seek, you'll find. You will always find what you're looking for because you'll start to program your mind to start looking for it. And if you're looking for reasons to be discouraged, if you're looking for reasons to confirm that you're a horrible person, you're gonna find them. If you're looking for reasons to find that the world is a horrible place, you're gonna find them. And if you're looking for proof that it's not gonna get better, you're gonna find it. But Jesus says, look, and what you're seeking, you'll find it. And what I'm encouraging you to do this morning is this. Set your sights, your perspective on something higher and seek his hand in everything. Because here's the thing, disappointments are going to come. I love something Martin Luther King Jr. said. He said this, we must accept finite disappointment, but we must never lose infinite hope. There's stuff that's going to come and it's going to suck. It's going to stink. You're going to go, this is the worst possible thing. My life is over. I'll never recover from this. But it's in that very moment that this stuff we believe either works or it doesn't work. The Apostle Paul said this, he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, you should feel sorry for us. We're the most to be pitied, he says. But he's saying, like basically he's saying, if this is literally all there is, like some people say, they say, well, if you just die and it's over. If this is literally all there is and we're living through this right now, you should really feel sorry for us. But we've got hope that there's something way better because we know the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter. And this is where he says in 2 Corinthians something. You've heard me quote this before, this verse. It's one of my favorites. And this is kind of the, the crux for this whole series we're going to be doing. Paul says this. He says, I don't care what happens to you. Don't lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away. Some of y'all can relate to that. You look in the mirror and you go, who is this person? What has happened to me? I'm falling apart. 
get up and you're like, oh, I didn't even know I had a muscle there. Like, how did I pull that? And all I was doing was watching TV. He says, hourly, we're wasting away. Yeah, man, sometimes in life, your body's not going to do what you want it to do. Sometimes in life, people aren't going to do what you want to do. Sometimes in life, the world is not going to look like you want it to. But he says this, but inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Transformation always starts inside and then goes outside. He says, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can be transformed inside. And he says this, this is what's crazy. He says this, for our light and momentary troubles, he calls them light. And some of you go, what I'm dealing with right now does not feel very light. I hear you. I, I hear you, but let me tell you this. Paul is saying, if you could only get your perspective lifted to see what's waiting for us ahead, what you're dealing with right now would feel pretty light. He says, these light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is is eternal. Amen. Reality, the true reality of what we're dealing with is happening in the unseen world. But that's hard to keep our eyes on, isn't it? You know why it's hard to keep your eyes on what's unseen? Because you can't see it. <laughs> Which is what faith is. Faith is a function of believing in the darkness what you can't see with your own eyes. You don't need faith if there's sunshine and unicorns prancing through your front yard, you only need faith when it gets super dark and you go, I can't see anything ahead. That's, only, that's the only time you can activate your faith. And here's the really crazy thing. Usually God does his greatest work in the dark. Remember that verse we read, Psalm 139 this morning? Darkness is the same as light to him. He's eternal light. Darkness doesn't even phase him. And sometimes it feels so dark around us and you're in this deep cloud of depression and discouragement and you're going, there's no way it can get better. There's no way I could ever be lovable. There's no way, there's no way. And right in the middle of that, God's doing some work over here and you hear a bunch of banging around, but you can't see it. And then all of a sudden that sun starts to rise and you go, whoa, what have your hands built while I was in the darkness, Lord? And it was because you held on to hope and you didn't give up in the darkness that you let him build and build and build. And he built that work. And when, you, when the sun starts to rise, you begin to see what he's been working on. And I'm telling you, man, he is at work no matter how dark it seems. So I want to throw something out, something really practical for you for how to keep hope. Because I can tell you all day, keep hope. But there's this verse, Jeremiah 29. And, and I want to apply it specifically to what we're about to face this week. Because this week, by the end of the week, the reality is half of our country is going to be very upset about what's going on. Half the country is going to go, how could anybody vote for that guy? How could anybody vote for her? How could a Christian vote for him? How could a Christian vote for her? Don't they know he is Hitler? He's an orange Hitler. <laughs> Don't they know she's a cackling communist hyena? Like, that's the things we're saying, right? Don't they? And you go, man, how can I live in a country with people that have these values? Well, listen, this isn't the first time this has happened. There's this story where the children of Israel, it's history actually, the children of Israel get hauled off from Israel and they get taken to a foreign land in Babylon and they're living in Babylon and this prophet Jeremiah writes them a letter, okay? And here's the crazy thing. We know this letter already because there's this really famous verse that's on every Hallmark Christian card you've ever seen, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And we're like, yeah, awesome. I love that. What you don't read is before it. I want to look at what comes before it because what's coming before it is a letter where God says to the children of Israel, he's like, I know you're in a country where you don't share the values with anybody, but here's what I want you to do. And here's how you hang on to hope right in the middle of it. He says this, build houses and settle down. That could be the sermon right there. Y'all settle down. All right. <laughs> Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. He says, increase in number there. Don't back down. Don't decrease. Also, seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. He says, I know you think you don't fit in with, any, with the, the values of the people around you, but here's what I'm calling you to do. The way you're going to keep your hope in the middle of no matter what's happening is you get to building. Start building what God has called you to build right around you. That means your family, 
build, build the people around you, build, build them up in the, in the understanding of the Lord, teaching them truth. You live right. You tell the truth. You do whatever it takes. Make sure you're there. Be present. Don't check out. Don't be zoned out on the phone. Don't be checking out. Stay engaged in the moment and build, build, build. And as you build, good things are going to start to happen. Here's what he says this. He says, look, I know the plans I've got for you. You know what I'm telling you to build? It's because I've got good plans for you. If you'll do what you're called to do, you just build right where you, don't worry about the stuff you can't control. You build what you can control right now. And he says this, I know the plans I've got for you. They're plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And you're going to call on me and come and pray to me and I'm going to listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart right in the middle of no matter what darkness is around you. The way we hold on to hope is you get busy building. Get busy doing what God has called you to do right now. And you say, I don't feel like I've got the power to do it. Hey, depend on his power. Do your best with what you can and trust that he's the one that's going to accomplish the work. I want to close with a quote by my favorite, my favorite author is a guy named G.K. Chesterton. And he says this, he says, the one perfectly divine thing, the one glimpse of God's paradise given on earth is to fight a losing battle and not lose. And I know some of you, you feel like today you're fighting a losing battle. You're saying, I don't think it can get better. Let me tell you this, stay in the fight. Don't give up because there is a very good chance you're gonna engage in the battle that you're certain you're gonna lose and God's power is gonna come behind you and you're gonna find yourself when the dust clears and the bodies are all around you and you got blood and dust all over you, you're the one standing up straight and people will go, how did you survive that? And you go, I don't know. And I don't ever wanna do it again. But I know it was God who gave me the strength. Amen. I fought a losing battle and I didn't lose. That's what my prayer is for all of you guys today. No matter what happens this week, no matter what happens next month, no matter what happens in the years to come, listen, stay in the fight. Don't give up hope. Build what you can build right now. Get engaged. Don't check out. Stay engaged. Be present. Do what God has called you to do. You've got what it takes right now to build what you need to build right now. So don't back down. You guys receive that? All right, let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you are working your purposes. Nothing can stop you. Nobody can hold you back. When you choose to move, it's a done deal. So Lord, we stay in faith. No matter how dark it feels right now, I pray for those that are dealing with depression and challenges in their life, just discouragement. Lord, I pray that a light of hope would start to shine through to them and they just take, fix their eyes on the sun that's gonna shine brighter and brighter and brighter in their life. If you're here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm gonna give you a chance to do that. Uh, I'm going to say a prayer and the prayer isn't a magic formula or anything, but it's a commitment of you saying, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I'm going to stop doing it my way. I'm going to give my life to you. And in that moment, God's going to forgive you of all your past, all your sins, all your failures. He's going to set you up with him in the kingdom of light and give you an eternal address with him. It starts when we say this prayer. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way and we turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We got some resources for you again. You guys can stand. You, man, I pray y'all will walk with confidence this week. No matter what happens, man, God is working in your life and he's working around the world. Don't lose hope. Be blessed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.